All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Ruby Reaction. We got Volume 4, Chapter 3, Runaways and Stowaways. And the last episode, man, Rooster Teeth, Rooster Teeth got me, man. They got me. I got emotionally wrecked. Yo, I freaking love Pira, bro. And that scene just, oh, man, that was just, that was just beautifully done, honestly. The music was amazing. You know, you can see the pain in John's face looking at that video, getting trained by Pira. He was hurting inside and... And um, Ruby was hurting inside also just watching. So, yeah, man. Damn. That thing hit me hard. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the reaction. Now we got Chapter 3, Runaways and Stowaways. Let's get right on to it, man, because we're on this binge for Ruby to catch up to Volume 6. So let's see what we got today. Yo, this intro is way better, man. I like the Volume 3 intro. It took some time. I like it. But this one, this one's amazing. It just gives me the vibe between Volume 1 and 2. Or 2 and 3 combined. I hope we got a new reactor in the building. What up, little guy? Long intro. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, Blake. Goddamn, Blake. Well, not many people travel by boat on their own. It can be quite a lonely voyage. But I've found those that do tend to have the more interesting stories. Maybe it's just better for some people to be alone. <gasps> <laughs> Maybe. But with your paranoia, I think Still haunted by it. faces wouldn't hurt. Who says I'm paranoid? <laughs> no one, dear. No one. I'll leave you be. But, uh, fair warning. These trips can be awfully boring. Shit, she's showing who she is. This. So I'm guessing she's going back home then. She won't be needing it. Who's watching her? Oh damn, there are some big sea creatures like Crow said. Oh shit, we're getting yay! With no end in sight. Try as they might, the local huntsmen and huntresses can't seem to get a hold of the situation at Beacon Academy. Though the fail-safes have supported wireless communication within the kingdom, the loss of the CCT tower continues to prevent contact with the outside world. Talks with Atlas officials regarding repairs have so far... The Vale Council voted this week to continue to ban any air traffic that does not have a direct correlation with evacuation. Council has made it clear that they feel... That Multiple rumors continue to circulate as to who was behind the attacks at the Vital Festival Tournament. 
While no one knows for sure, officials have confirmed that high-ranking White Fang member Adam Torres was present for the attack. Any and all attempts to bring him into custody have been met with brutal force. I'm home! Hey, Dad. Guess what came in today? We've got mail. What? Damn, so Yang is just stuck at home right now? Wait for you to try this. Well? It's for me? For you and you only. What is it, cake? Nope. Oh. Brand new state of the art Atlas tech. You know, I thought I was going to have to pull some strings, call in a few favors, but you earned this one all on your own, kiddo. Huh? Before I could even talk to him, General Ironwood already had one of his top scientists working on this for you. He wanted me to tell you that you fought admirably. You should be proud of yourself. Well, you gonna try it on? Is he gonna want I, it or no? I'm not feeling too great right now. Maybe later? <sighs> well, all right. Damn, Yang is wrecked, man. Thanks, Dad. But it's gonna take her time. She's gotta get used to it now. PTSD. They all have PTSD. Because Blake has paranoia. She has PTSD. Ruby's haunted by the dreams. Damn, man. They're all just going through a rough patch. Scars that can't be seen. Damn, I got a new outfit, huh? Looking good, Blake. Looking good. Who is that? Who's there? We got a big sea creature. It's the Kraken! By the gods. Oh! A sea dragon? Sea serpent? Sir, we've never fought a grim this big. We've never seen something this big. But we'll give her a fight nonetheless. Well, we'll give her a fight, matey. Oh shit, Blake is gonna be badass. Let's go, baby girl. Oh my god, this is huge. All right, who's gonna have a secret power? Let's go, Captain, show yourself. Oh, sh they got cannons. Hold steady, man. It's not done with us yet. 
I was about to say, they got Nora. I mean, Nora. They got Coco. Oh my God. Heavy cannon, open fire. Oh my God, it's gonna use hyper beam. Oh, it's Sun! Sun? Not today, pal. Okay, what Sun. Uh, well, you know, just uh, hang it out. Whoa. 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 Bye. Supposed to be here. <laughs> yeah. Well, it looks like oh man, that's funny. Uh, just shut up and fight. Yes, man. This dude, man. Server defenses are down, sir. Sun is something else, bro. Hi, but it's moving too fast. We can't land a hit. Um, how about the engines? Fully functional, Captain. Up, oh, he's gonna hit him with the ship. That's so cool. Huh? Come to me, baby. Hey, for me. My hero. Uh. Okay, maybe later. And this is a cool shot. Oh. Watch out, son! Saved your life. Seriously, it was no big deal. Just enjoy the rest of your trip and everything will be cool. We got this. You'd think they'd never seen a fight before. What are you doing here, son? Digging the new outfit, by the way. Never did like the bow. Son! Jeez. Have you been following me? I saw you run off. The night beacon tower fell. Once we landed in Vale, you made sure everyone was okay. And then you just took off without saying anything. I had to. You wouldn't understand. No, I get it. The moment you left, I knew exactly what you were doing. You're going on a one-woman rampage against the White Fang! What? Nope. You've always felt like the Fang was your fight. They show up, Trash your school? Hurt your friends? It makes perfect sense. I can't believe you. But there's no way I'm letting you do this alone. It's an honorable approach for sure, but you're gonna need someone watching your back. And that's where I come in. Us Fauna's gotta stick together after all. You're wrong, son. 
You're so, so wrong. She's gonna what go you, hunt down. I'm not going anywhere near the white Adam. Fang. Oh nope, never not mind. Yet. Seriously? I need to sort some things out. Then why not do it with your team? Your friends. You're one to talk. Assuming Neptune stage and Scarlet aren't hiding below deck. You really think I could get Neptune on the ocean? <laughs> why are you scared of Mistral? water? I told him I'd catch up. Not the first time I left him to take a boat. <coughs> so, if you're not going after the White Fang, where are you going? Home. She's going home, right? Home. To Menagerie. Well, I'm coming with you. The Grim are getting worse. You saw it yourself. And just because you're not going after the Fang doesn't mean they won't be coming for you. Besides, I'm kind of already on the boat. <laughs> There's really no stopping you. Nope. This is going to be great. Never been to Menagerie before. It'll be a regular journey to the east. Yeah, I like the sound of that. Oh. Do you feel it? Don't fight it, girl. It can sense your trepidation. You must make it dread you. What the hell is going on, man? Oh my god, they just sound so weird in my ear. Cinder, I am going to ask you this one more time, and I expect a clear answer. Did you kill Ospin? I knew it. So he's no. alive. I want to hear you say it. Husband's alive. Reinforce our numbers at Beacon. The relic is there. The relic? Okay. So we're getting mysterious now. Alright, so that's the end of episode 3 of Runaways and Stowaways. Pretty much just showing us where Blank and Yang are right now at, at this point of time. After the fall of Beacon. Uh, Yang is obviously still at home trying to recuperate. Still suffering from PTSD, which is a normal. Which, of course, is... um what she would be going through because of this because of what happened to her um her father ty got her an arm from atlas which is cool as hell ironwood was more than happy to help her and um we ended up seeing blake who's going back home to to marjorie whatever the place is named um gonna back go gonna go back home which is pretty much the intro i think that's probably her father who the big fella Maybe that maybe it's her father. Um, and <clears throat> god damn, I hate being sick. And then we end the episode again with Salem. Some more things with Salem. Um, her asking Cinder if he she actually killed Ospin or not. Now, I don't think Ospin's dead. I know this is what you guys have been telling me Ospin is dead, but I don't think Ospin's dead. I think Ospin's alive somehow. But I don't think he would just have abandon them so Osman has a plan because Cinder told Salem 
Yes. That she did kill him. But it seems like Salem knows that something's going on. Like maybe Cinder did kill Ospin. But Ospin's still doing something afterwards. If that makes sense. If, if he's dead but he's still doing something afterwards in the afterlife. Because she asked right here, what are you up to? And like she doesn't understand. Because I don't, Ospin's not a normal person. Let's get that straight. Ospin's not a regular person. Ospin is either a, a warlock... And as we want to call it, a wizard or something. He's something ancient. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on with Ospin, if he's alive or not, if he's dead. If he's actually dead, then what's he doing? Because it sounds like he has a plan still. There's, there's still something going on. We still haven't visited the kid from back in episode one again. So I don't know. A lot of mis mystery going on right now. But um, yeah. We move on now to Volume 4, Chapter 4. And I'll see you guys next time. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share, and comment. I'm going to be catching up for Volume 6. We'll be on the lookout for a Volume 6 trailer reaction. And yeah, peace.